Can't you just imagine one of those religious scholars saying to Jesus, well, that was really lucid. <laughs> you gotta love the richness of all the translations available to us, and the light they shed on the scriptures that we know so well, and I know you know this one so well in King James or New Revised Standard Version. But let us pray. Who will be a witness, God? We pray that transformed by your spirit, we pray that by living faithfully in community, we pray that by praying, being together in your word, that will be all of us, witnesses to your truth, to your gospel, to your way in the world. In Christ we pray. Amen. The universe is alive. Human beings have been looking up and getting hooked on the view for centuries. I get that. I'm not much in support of the wealthy men who are taking what seem like boutique trips into space, at least not while the problems we face on Earth are as daunting and intractable as they are. And these space cowboys are not contributing what they could and should to saving our democracy and overhauling the structural injustices that exist. President Biden is celebrating the just announced agreement coming out of the G20 summit in Rome that will tax corporations who shield their profits in foreign countries. But Congress, Democrats, we have to keep saying that. Democrats won't even raise the corporate rate in this country from 21% to 28%, still far below the 35% rate during the Obama era that Trump abandoned. Still, space is inevitably a part of our present and future, its existence a wonder all its own. The pictures we've seen over the last several decades have given us vivid, color-filled images of what we long thought of as a vast blackness sprinkled with brilliant white stars a contrast that doesn't begin to approach what actually exists. Breathtaking beauty, elements known and unknown to us in balances that suggest there may have been or could be conditions at least similar to what sustains our life on Earth. NASA is thoroughly engaged in brilliant work to answer questions that may help us understand that Big Bang, how it all came to be, what's out there that might help us now and in the future. Dragonfly is a mission to a moon of Saturns called Titan, where a craft will land taking pictures on the way down of rivers and mountains and lakes, much like our own. What a thing it is to be alive, to wake and draw breath, to live on this speck of earth in a universe of universes so vast it is beyond our comprehension, even while we are trying to do just that, comprehend. I'm good with the science. Let's learn more and more about the gaseous beginnings of the stuff of the universe's ever-expanding, deep and mysterious. None of it diminishes my belief in a creative force and animating spirit, a love supreme, 
God, says the writer of Ephesians, above all and through all and in all. And we are in that, all of it. We come from it through the miracle of birth, water, chemicals, matter. And we return to it through the miracle of death. Eternity is ours, this fleeting moment of consciousness for any one of us stretched across the centuries through our shared humanity accompanied by the many forms of life that enrich our being together by unfathomable degrees of beauty and wonder. What a design. What a strategic plan. What joy and grace amid shadows that do not diminish the experience in the complex formulas we have yet to fully unravel. Thank God. Thank God for all that is, for creation, for up there and here. Thank God and love God with all your heart and mind and soul. We woke up this morning, every morning, and every Sunday, and for some of us every day, and for some others of us every Wednesday evening, you know who you are. I see you. At least I know you're there. And you see us here. We breathe. We work. We play. We read and rest and enjoy one another. And it is a joy, all of it, gift given to us. Love God. And I want to slip the earth in here, in between God, neighbor, and self. It's fair. Our earth is unspeakably beautiful. Pick your spot. For me, it's Yosemite, Half Dome, El Capitan, waterfalls like the Ribbon Fall. So magnificent, you sacrifice breath for still moments that fill, that feel like eternity. Mountains, rivers, oceans, continents, sights and sounds that dare us to think that we are all of it, that it's all about us. Mountains, rivers, oceans, continents, so much more in addition to the gift of life we know. But why stretch? so much in this vein. Joyce Kilmer lays it bare. I think that I shall never see a poem as lovely as a tree, a tree whose hungry mouth is pressed against the earth's sweet flowing breast, a tree that looks at God all day and lifts her leafy arms to pray, a tree that may in summer wear a nest of robins in her hair, upon whose bosom snow has lain, who intimately lives with rain. You know the end? Poems are made by fools like me, but only God can make a tree. We can't possibly love others if we don't love the earth. If this dominion we've been given is forfeited for penthouses, fashion, corporations and conglomerates, plastic, that's oil in a bottle and a slick bag to carry my groceries, destined to live forever while killing life in the ocean. Love God and love the earth. 
And that's redundant, really. I can't love God, creator, and destroy earth. That's deadly ironic, nonsensical. We can't love God and keep multiplying the store of radioactive waste stored above and buried underground with no real plan how to keep it from incinerating us. We can't love God and ignore climate change. We can't love God and strip the Build Back Better package of its core climate initiatives. We can't love God and subject the earth to more drilling for oil, more mining for coal, more single-use plastic bottles. Love God and love the earth. We have no choice in this, no reasonable choice, no intelligent alternative. There are children among us. You will see the tomorrow we leave. We see you. We love you. So we love God and we must love the earth. Love for what is other than us, more than us, beyond us, outside of us, above us. Love without the compulsion to manipulate, control, and distort for reasons we know or are no longer good for us or good for the earth, our only home. Love God and love the earth and love our neighbor. I'm hearing Nat King Cole now. And we all know what that thing is. Love. Love is the thing. It's the title track of his 1957 album, Love is the Thing. What good is money if your heart is in right? Fortune and fame, they never... We are wasting God's gift if we aren't loving one another, serving one another, living for one another. Our world is broken because we have not, we cannot so far love our neighbor. We don't recognize one another as neighbors. We inhabit what we take to be different universes. Why not use the cosmic term? That's how vast are the differences we imagine so that we arm ourselves and kill one another. We're Republicans and Democrats, Iranians, Russians, Americans, and Japanese. We're Muslims, Jews, Christians, nuns. We're the very wealthy and everybody else. We're cis or variously gendered. We're the Western European model for civilization, or we're not up to that standard, not quite civilized wannabes. We're everything else before we are human, neighbors on God's earth. We serve our own needs first in case there isn't enough. Scarcity rules, abundance ignored. Serve and hate will die unborn. Love and chains are broken. Wrote Langston Hughes in his poem, Alabama Earth spoken over the grave of Booker T. Washington. Darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love 
can do that, wrote Martin Luther King Jr. in Strength to Love. One love, one heart, sang Bob Marley. I'm hearing Nat again from the song Nature Boy. The greatest thing you could ever learn is just to love and be Russell, thank you for sparing them from having to hear me sing that. <laughs> and you better believe I gave it some thought. Amen. Love God and love the earth and love my neighbor. My job is to plant seeds of love and to keep on planting, even or especially when bad weather comes. It's folly to think I can know the grand plan, how my small action fits into the larger whole. All I can do is check myself again and again and again. Do my actions look like love? preached presiding Episcopal Bishop Michael Curry. Oh my, do my actions look like love? I need to check myself. You need to check yourself. What I just said, what you just did, what we are doing together, does it look like love? Does it give you that loving feeling, righteous brothers? Is it righteous? Are my actions righteous? Does it look like love? Let's check ourselves. Everything we say, every single thing we do, does it look like God's Love. It's Resurrection, I'm sorry, Reformation Sunday. It's Resurrection Sunday too. Every, every day is, amen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's Resurrection and Reformation Sunday. And our text says, and you know these words from the New Revised Standard Version, and to love neighbor as self. This is much more important than sacrifices and burnt offerings. Luther could have gotten his clue from this text right here. Rich folks buying their way out of trouble, paying for sin, for advantages in a system that consigned the made poor to the theological basement. This is, for certain, deeply flawed theology. It was then, it is now. Nothing biblical about it at all. Love God and this planet. Love my neighbor as I love myself. Every one of us is beautiful. Every one of us loved by someone. We have our preferences. Some folks we must love but may never like. Amen. God loves us all. Loving self is where it all begins. Not the vanity of I'm the greatest. Muhammad Ali has copyright on that one. And that's all right with me. I'm talking about the quiet confidence of the I 
am worthy that all of us can claim. The my face is in the image of God that each one of us can say and see reflected in the mirror and in the stillness of water. In her book on the early mystics, Ursula King paraphrases St. Catherine of Genoa from the late 15th century. My deepest God is me. Say that with me, at home and here. My deepest God is me. That makes even more profound the truth of God's image on every face. You and I are worthy because God is in us. And we are in God. In each human soul there exists a divine element, wrote Gregory of Nyssa in the fourth century, a kind of inner eye capable of glimpsing something of God, for there exists a deep relationship and affinity between human and divine nature. God is in me, in us. I am, we are in God. Raise your game. Raise your game. God is in you. I gotta lift my aim, my standard for how I walk and talk and act in the world because God is in me. God is in you. You've got to show up in the world, not in your Halloween costume, rather clothed, clothed as you are with the light of God. Oh my, oh my. Richard Rohr, whose daily meditations are the source of the last several quotes, wrote in The Universal Christ, the essential work of religion is to help us recognize and recover the divine image in ourselves and everything else too. Whatever we call it, the image of God is absolute and unchanging. There is nothing we can do to increase or decrease it. It is not ours to decide who has it or does not have it. It is pure and total gift given to all. Equally. Your gift is yours to use, to make the world a better place for you and yours, for all. Love God and love the earth and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Amen. <laughs>